Good morning. It's 9 a.m. Friday, January 28th, 2022. Welcome to the good news. Good morning. It's 9 a.m. Friday, January 28th, 2022. Good morning. Is, does it seem like, like this morning came really fast? It did. <laughs> it, did. it did. Good morning, everyone. It is Friday. Again, the weeks go so fast sometimes. It looks like a nice day outside, but I know it's cold. Good morning, Barry and Margo, Patty. People are starting to join us. Um, I am Carrie Van. I'm the communications manager at the church and the moderator of the deacons. Pretty excited about the guests that we have today, um, who are the founders of the Downriver Foster Closet. Better get rid of that mint I'm eating. Um, so we will look forward to bringing them in in just a few minutes after we get started here and give people a few minutes to get in. I'm going to try to share this in the group, Sue, if you could talk about what's going on tonight at the church. We are having an organ concert. concert from the U of M Oregon Department. Several of their, uh, I believe they're all doctoral candidates like our own Christine El Haj. Uh, she will be playing tonight as well as some of her classmates from the University of Michigan Oregon Department. And yes. with our, our cameras, the way we have them now in the sanctuary, we'll be able to see their hands and hopefully their feet and it'll be really cool. So we'll be able to see and hear them. And I do believe, is it going to be live, um, live streamed or not? Uh, yes, we are going, we are going to live stream that. So if you're not able, if you're not able to come, you can definitely watch it on our live stream, which will be live streamed on Facebook and YouTube. And that's at 7 yes. p.m. tonight, right? Yes, 7 p.m. tonight in our sanctuary. We're really looking forward to it. It's a great opportunity to see beautiful organ music being played in our sanctuary by I think there's at least eight I think there's eight or nine students so it's it's going to be a very nice concert to come to oh yes I don't think I said who I am <laughs> who are you Sue I'm Suzanne Maxey and I'm an elder at Allen Park Presbyterian Church and this is a presentation of the Allen Park Presbyterian Church and speaking of this Sunday we have some important business that we do every year it's our annual meeting of the congregation and we will be having ordination and installation of the new officers at the same time it's Again, this Sunday, January 30th, immediately following worship. And it will be in person in the sanctuary, but it also will be live streamed. But just keep in mind, we need 42 members present for a quorum. So we can't have the meeting unless we have 42 people there. Um, it should be pretty safe right. since the sanctuary holds like 650 or whatever. I think 42 can spread out quite nicely in there and um be very safe yes so. absolutely and uh, you know of course masks are required in in the church buildings and i mean hopefully pastor tim isn't watching but even <laughs> if you don't, even if you don't make it to church please come to the annual meeting it, it's it's not going to be a long drawn out event but for the first time right after the annual meeting they're going to do the ordination and installation of our new officers for the deacons, for the session, and for the trustees. So it's it's a nice thing to support, but we can't do any of that unless we have a quorum to vote. So please come to the annual meeting. We don't want to have to reschedule, and, yes, we and do not. Uh, I don't even know what we would do at that point. So please come. The weather should be fine. It'll be cold, but it should be dry. So we really hope you can come to the meeting. All right, Sue, what else do we have going on? We should probably um, talk about our fifth Sunday. Every time there's a fifth Sunday in, in the year, in the month, um, we try to, the deacons try to focus on a new mission. Once we bring awareness to a mission, we normally have like a drive going or we're collecting for something, but we're bringing awareness about for a new mission. And once we complete our drive for the fifth Sunday, we like to keep this on. We're still um, very much involved with the other missions that we've been doing throughout last year. So today we're kind of excited because we're going to talk to Charity Bronson 
Um, she's the, one of the founders from the Down River Foster Closet. So we have a chance to ask questions. I'm, I am watching, um, Sue threw up a graphic for us. I am watching the chat. Good morning, everyone. We have a lot of people with us. Yep, how oh, the dynamic duo, the other dynamic duo, absolutely. <laughs> So let's bring yeah, Chuck. <laughs> yeah. Referring to Barry and Margo, of course. So let, let's bring Charity in and feel free to ask questions so we can learn more about what we have been contributing. Our deacon, Linda Clark, is the one who um, is the leader of this fifth Sunday. And we she has gotten a lot of collections. So when I'm done with this, I will post a link to our Amazon shopping list in this chat. So you can always come back and take a look at that. All right, I'm gonna bring Charity in, Sue, okay? All righty. All right. All right, we'll give Charity a minute to get her audio and her camera on if she chooses to do so. Good morning, Charity. If you want to go ahead and unmute and turn your camera on, if you so desire, we are live. We are live with our audience. So unfortunately, I won't be able to um, turn my camera on. I'm driving, so. Okay, that is fine. And you have a, you have a very nice picture, and we, that's fine. We're just very excited that you're here with us today. So as I just told our audience, and as our church knows, one of our deacons, Linda Clark, contacted you, and we focused on supporting and bringing awareness about of Down River Foster Closet, and we have been collecting, you know, certain items for you. So we're very interested in you telling us how you you and Kim decided to start this uh, nonprofit. So how it started was um, Kim and I we actually became friends um, due to foster care. I had actually taken in a placement that was once placed with her that um, ended up with me because she had surgery on her arm. So her daughter and I actually knew each other from school. So she kind of like reached out and was like, mom, my friend got a placement, same age, everything. And um. So that's kind of like how we met. She called me and ever since then, we talked every single day um, and most of it had to do with foster care and the system and the kids that we've been helping. And we always joked about starting our own closet because the closest closet to us was in Livonia. So it was like a good 45 minute drive um, for us to get out there and get items when we needed it. And Kim has been doing this for, oh, I think almost 10 years. She's had over 43 kids. Wow. Um, yeah, so she kind of had a mini closet going, whereas me, I was new and had only had a couple kids in care. So I was starting to grow mine. So we used to always joke about opening our own little closet and turning it into a boutique and doing all kinds of different classes and support groups. And then one day she called me at like 10 o'clock at night and she was like, all right, we're doing this. I'm putting it on Facebook. <laughs> and I was like, all right, let's do it. And we didn't think it was going to grow as quickly as it's grown or has gotten as big as it did. We thought, you know, we'd have like a few items here and there. Well, within a week of us posting that post, we had went the very next day and we had, um, rented out some pods in Woodhaven, um, like storage units, and um, we filled it by the end of the week. We had to get a third wow. pod. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So we started in January of 2020, and by, ooh, I want to say by March, we had about seven full storage units of clothes. Wow. Yeah. So you you ran right into the you started and ran right into the pandemic a couple months later. So you we did. You, yeah. you so we, actually, we right. actually hit the pandemic when we moved into the building that we're in right now. We had a volunteer that donated. Um, well, her husband had donated a house 
for us to move into because the storage unit was just way too costly. We were paying out of pocket at this time and just trying to raise some funds, but obviously we were new, so we didn't do a whole lot of fundraising. Um, so they had offered us this house and it was perfect. It was four bedrooms. We were able to fill up the entire house and we are actually packed. That house is filled from top to bottom. Um, and we actually have pods on the lot now that has more donations. Wow. So, so answer me this charity, and this is a very naive question, but I think everyone will want to hear the answer to this. Foster care in our area, I don't know if there's a lot of awareness about it, and you serve downriver. So there's there's a lot going on with foster care. Would you say that, like, how does it work? Like somebody contacts you and say, and tells you that they've just taken on a child and, and their needs. I've been watching your Facebook, and I know you guys collect for a lot of different things. How does that work? It's, it's a great need, I'm assuming. Yes, so we we do cover our our main area is downriver, but we actually service the entire state of Michigan. So any foster parent, um, relative placement, or any kids that have been adopted out of foster care or ha have aged out of foster care and in are in like independent living programs can utilize the closet. Um, but downriver itself has about a little bit under five hundred hundred families from Monroe area all the way from downriver to like Dearborn, Detroit area. And that's mainly who utilizes us the most. Um, and what happens is, so for example, I'm actually pulling up to the closet now to pack an order. So a foster parent reached out to us last night and, and she had recently just taken in a baby girl a few weeks ago. Um, and she got a call for a newborn um, baby boy. So she was prepared for the baby girl. She kind of knew it was coming, but she wasn't prepared for two infant children. Um, so she needs a double stroller, an extra car seat. Um, she needs boy clothes because she had only girl stuff. So they call us and let us know that they got placement and the age and the um, gender of the child and the items of what they need. And then we fill it. So we have everything from baby furniture all the way to diapers and formula, hygiene products, um, and then clothes. We collect anything from newborn, well, preemie actually, um, all the way up to 3XL in men and women. Uh, on the clothes that, that you collect, is it gently used or is it all new? So it's gently used. Um, we take gently used. We absolutely would love to take all new but um we take gently used items and then we also take new items we just ask for the gently used it needs to be something that you would put on your own child you know we don't accept items that have stains on them or are torn up or look like they've been through a washer machine you know a couple hundred times you know we want these kids to utilize these clothes, not just for clothing, but also for confidence. You know, they're in a really sad time of their life where they're being pulled from their only home that they know. They're going and living with strangers that they don't necessarily know. And most of the time they're not able to bring any of their own belongings. So everything is new to them and they feel like they don't have anything that they can call their own. So that's what we do. We give them you know, new clothes, book bags, um, gently used clothes and shoes. And we hope that helps them feel like that is theirs. They get to take it with them. They take it with them home or if they end up staying in the foster home. Um, and that is theirs for as long as they fit in it. So that's why we stress that it's very important for people to really look at the clothes before they donate to us because right now, we're still in the pandemic and we don't get a lot of volunteers. So it's Kim, myself, and a couple other people that run everything. So that's from fundraising to sorting, to filling orders, to logging everything, um, and just keeping up on the house. Right. And I mean, we, we have done collections for Christnet and other, um, other 
clothing donation sources. And you're right. I should have said clean, gently used, and new is preferred. Wait, wait till you see all of the underwear and different things that we have collected for you. Um, our drive, our drive ends this Sunday, but like I said, we don't let people go once we once we support them, we support them forever. So I'm I'm very excited about that. And I, I feel like what you're doing is a wonderful service. It's something that I haven't been overly aware of in it, it just sounds like you guys have really taken off and there was a need for this in the area. Yeah, there was a huge need for it. Um, especially with families that are relative placement. We have so many families in the Don River area, grandparents that are taking care of grandchildren um, that they don't get very much help from the state at all. So. Okay. So, so when somebody contacts you, you're dealing right with the foster parents. They they come to your location that you put together, uh, you know, uh, the things that they need. And that's pretty much how it works, right? Yep. Yep. They come straight to us. Now, we do get calls from like CPS um, and social workers that reach out to us on behalf of their foster parents but for the most part we work one-on-one -on -one with the foster parents or the relative um kinship placements okay so i know i know that you're kind of known for collecting suitcases and i don't even want to bring this up because i know how this goes sometimes we did not choose to collect suitcases for you but if you were are you still collecting suitcases or what are, are your biggest needs that that people could be looking to to donate to so our biggest needs that we're always in need of are hygiene products um diapers wipes pull-ups is a big thing for us right now um and the new underwear and socks those are all something we'll always be in need of um but suitcases and duffel bags are also extremely needed um because that's what we pack our orders in so every order that comes in we utilize the duffel bags or we utilize the suitcases and that's where what we send home with them um so we're always looking for that now my only thing is is when people donate suitcases i always tell them like we give these to the kids and we allow them to utilize that for like if they are traveling. So when you're donating suitcases, if you can look at the suitcase and make sure, you know, it's something that a kid would be proud of and would like. Um, we get a lot of the older suitcases, which we do use, um, but we prefer to hand out something more kid friendly. Right. Right. I mean, there, there's so, yes, there's so many cute things like the pool behind you, like the big backpacks and things like that. I'm sure children would love to be able to have something like that to put their belongings in when they're in transition. So I'm actually at the house now. If you're okay. interested, I can kind of show you what it looks like if you'd like. Yes, we are very, yes, 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 yes. Okay. All right. So I'm going to turn on the camera. Hi everyone. Hi. Thank you for thank you for doing this. I know you're busy and we appreciate your time. No All problem. right. So we are looking, we are looking at the Down River Foster Closet right now. Oh. That so what, ideally what we do is eventually once this pandemic um kind of moves along. Um, the idea is for the kids to actually come in and shop themselves. So the foster parents and the kids would come up to these rooms and we have everything hung up and listed by size and they would be able to go through it and try on items um, to make sure it fits and pick whatever they wanted. So we have all of the clothes all the way from 2T, 3T, 4T, 5T, um, all the way to 3XL in men's. Um, and then we have the pajamas on the side. And then we also offer shoes, gently used shoes. So we have the shoes 
up here by size. And then they can get a pack of um, new underwear, which are down there, and then a pack of socks. So like, see, our socks are starting to dwindle down a little bit for the little kids. So this is something we're always in need of with socks. Okay, we have that on our list, but I'll push it a little bit more. Hold on, I'll get a baby. So then the other rooms are kind of a mess right now. So we have a girl's room and then we have a baby's room um, that we're in the process of redoing. But then over here, we actually have books, um, school supplies. So when a kid comes into care, like I'm packing for a six-year-old right now, he'll get a new um, book bag filled with school supplies. And then we give them books and then board games. And then these are some of the suitcases and duffel bags. Okay. Okay, great. We will definitely keep that in mind. I'm taking notes. Go back downstairs. Why? Please go downstairs. So um, the other thing is, like I said, the hygiene products are something big for us. Um, we have, let me swap this around. So our bathroom is kind of stocked with the hygiene products. So we're always in need for the teen girls. We always get requests for like pads and tampons. Um, and then shampoo and conditioner um acts so one thing that these boys always ask us for are these axe kits so show us let me see that better okay axe kits all right yeah so like the axe spray and the axe deodorant um so when we first started this uh <clears throat> and kim always tells this story because it just has always stick with us but she had a foster parent bring three teenage boys into at that time we were at the storage unit and they were packing an order and they were able to kind of like shop similar to this um and she grabbed an axe kit which had like the spray and the deodorant and the body wash and she gave it to the 14 year old and he was so excited. He had never had cologne ever. Aww. And he cried. Aww. And it was the most touching thing. And it really makes us think like me and Kim, when we, we always talk about it, you know, we take small things like this for granted. You know, who would have ever thought that this could have changed that little boy's life because he had never owned one and he was 14 years old. No, I'm crying. Okay, fantastic. I'm like I said, I'm taking notes on this, and we have been doing um, hygiene products. So I'm I'm gonna add these ax kits and things like that on there. It's good to know how it's being used. That was a touching story. So that's pretty much the closet um, upstairs. The other areas of the closet um they're under construction right now what's that so I'm, I'm assuming that you and kim have other things that you do in your life so this is this is a big mission uh sounds like you have a little one and you, you yeah. guys have other things going on so this is something that you've added to your life and, and probably keeps you really busy, I would imagine. Yeah, so Kim and I are actually, we're foster parents ourselves and we have, she has five kids and I have four kids right now. Um, and then we both work full time. Wow. wow. I'm, just, I'm just so impressed and this is just absolutely fantastic, Cherry. I mean, you and Kim have brought such an amazing service to the area, and I want you to stay in touch with us moving forward. We can always throw up needs. You need something. We have a lot of resources and ways to, to get that. If there's something that you're running low on, just always let us know, and we'll do our best to promote that need for you. Perfect. I appreciate it so much.
All right. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for being with us. Like I said, we, we have been promoting Down River Foster Closet as our fifth Sunday mission, which is actually this Sunday on the 30th. So a charity could not have been a guest with us at a better time. And she is going to appreciate everything that we have done. I know Linda Clark said things were coming in at a really good clip for a while. I'm going to promote that again today and tomorrow and, and moving forward. So uh, Charity, thank you so much. And thank you for the tour. I did not expect to get that. I'm so excited that you showed us. That was wonderful. You're um, so before, welcome. Before and we I, let, I'd yeah, before, to again. yes, thank you. Before we let Charity go, does anybody watching have a question for Charity? about the Down River Foster Closet. It takes a second round of delay. So we'll just have some little dead air here for a few seconds. We fill it though, don't we? Yeah, we it's usually babble on. Yes, we usually babble on about something. <laughs> okay, not seeing any questions come in. I can always get them to you later. I just wanna thank you again and have a great day and please keep in touch. And I'm sure Linda will be thank contacting you. you soon. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. All right. Thank you for all you do for being a foster parent as well. Yes. Thank you. Have a great day, you guys. All right. Thanks, thank Sherry. You. Okay, Sue, that was fantastic. Oh, it was. That was really, really good. What a great thing to have um, done. And I love technology because... We, we do so many things and we talk about so many things and you and I are both kind of in the same profession with what, what we do for a living. And sometimes it's so hard to get the, Linda Clark just said, thank you. I'm on mute at the doctor's office. So she has been watching. Um, it, it's so hard to get the word out there, but it's, it's amazing that we have this forum that we can actually bring what we're doing to everyone who watches us and to everyone who watches us later. Yep. Um, I know that story about the ax and the teenage boy is gonna stay with me all day long. Uh, and that was very touching. And I think we picked a great charity to, to promote and I'm looking forward to them receiving everything that our friends and congregation have donated. Uh, Cindy Winslow said, how long do you keep the foster children? I'm not sure about that. I, I'm not sure how the foster care system works. But I know it can be for a short period of time while, while kids are in transition and it can be for a long period of time. Yep. So every time that a child comes into foster care, if it was something that happened abruptly, as Charity was saying, they come with nothing. So we're talking about babies all the way up to um, older teens. And I was really surprised and really touched that they also help foster children who have already aged out of the system. Yeah, that that's is awesome. Instead of just throwing them on the street, you know, you turn 18, they get thrown on the street. Uh, yes. Is, oh, I can't imagine. I, yeah, I'm because I, I was taking notes and we were collecting only up to children's sizes, but they do take up to men's 3XL. Right. So that, that, yeah, that was good to hear. And wow, I can't believe that they filled up a house that quickly. Four bedrooms. And, <laughs> four bedroom wow. house. And, and she's right. Once the pandemic gets to the point where we can be together more, then kids will actually be able to shop in there. That's going to be wonderful. Absolutely fantastic. Oh. Yeah, like so boutique. Yes, a little boutique. All right, what time is it, Sue? It's 9.30. It's 9.30. <laughs> so before we start getting on to a big babbling fast, we should let people get to their days. Um, so write this down. Tonight, 7 p.m., please come to Christine Alahaj's organ recital, which is what I called it, but it's more of a concert. You're going to hear the music of the organ, it sounds fantastic in the sanctuary. You can feel it in your chest, it gives you goosebumps. You have an opportunity to watch eight or nine students who are eventually going to move on and play the organ in other places. You never know 
where, where that where that leads you know you never know where that ends up it's a free concert they'll have a basket for a free will offering u of m has um said that the it can be for the church we'll take um a free will offering for the music ministry of our church so we do appreciate that very much uh kathy hollowell says sounds like a great program for us to support absolutely absolutely I have loved all of the missions. In fact, Sue, in a few weeks, we're going to be interviewing Angie Winton from De uh, Metro Detroit Shares. Yes, we are. And Right, and that we did really, really well. We, we collected so many blankets and I will admit this to her live on our show, but I didn't even know she was a, a Taylor Councilwoman. Yes. When I talked to her on the phone, we just talked about Metro Detroit Shares and she said she was busy. And I was like, well, now I see why. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Who do we have next week, Sue? Jim Barry, correct? Um, I don't know. You're the keeper it, of the guest list. <laughs> I believe it is. Well, if it's not next week, which I believe it is, I'm looking forward to meeting Jim Barry. I've um, known that name for all the years I've worked in Allen Park. And I'm looking forward to getting to know oh, his... Yes, yep. Yeah, knowing his role. On the <laughs> I can't wait. So I'm looking forward to hearing um, what he has to say and what he does for the Allen Park Chamber. And I think that's it. Please come to the annual meeting. I, I'm, I feel like you're sick of me saying that. And I feel like um, if we can just get this done, we'll all be in a good spot. So please do that. Please come to worship. Uh, we worship at 10 o'clock on Sundays in the sanctuary. We broadcast it live on Facebook and YouTube. Um, if you missed a portion of this show that Sue and I do every Friday, you can also go to YouTube and watch all of our shows. So that's it, Sue. What do you think? Should we call it a wrap? Uh, pretty close. So we, we might want to mention the fundraiser. Uh, that's Valentine's weekend on the 13th is the fundraiser, the comedy show for uh, Camp Wakanda. I know we have a flyer that we have, and there's links for donating and getting- Do you have that flyer, Sue? Can you throw that flyer up real quick? Uh, if you have it there? Uh, yep. There we go. So we will be interviewing Al Ernst in Motown, Mark DeMauro, again, right before the show on the 11th of February. Um, they're both a who. Um, this is an opportunity to go to a very fun event right in our fellowship building. And there's many ways you can attend. If you go, the tickets are $30. It includes food, an hour of entertainment, fellowship. Again, the fellowship hall is big. There's plenty of room to space out. Um, if you're not comfortable doing that, we're selling links for $20 and you can watch the entire show an hour or so after it's completed on our YouTube channel. So that is going to be very funny. Al is known for his clean comedy, so it's perfect for a church. Um, as you may have heard the last time we interviewed Mark DeBarro, he does a lot of fundraisers for churches and for other local, yep. lo local events. So we're really looking forward to doing that. Um, we did, Norma Bentley said, thank you, Sue and Carrie. Your good news was very special. Oh, God bless Charity and Kim for all they do. Uh, and uh, we do have another Camp kind of Focus meeting next Wednesday, I believe. Uh, Sue and I are working in a subcommittee for fundraising and communications. It's a great group, a uh, varied age group, varied Camp Wakanda experience. We have a whole campaign we're rolling out. So if you want to get involved with something and you're not afraid to jump on Zoom with us, we're going to be doing, uh, we'll be meeting in the next two weeks to start rolling out some very exciting things. We could use your help. We could use your enthusiasm. And we could use your camp. stories of camp. Yes, we need your stories. We, we need your photos. <laughs> yes, we need you to help us with a Facebook group we're starting because we want to take that Facebook group and we want to try to reach as many people across the country that have come to camp as we can. That way, we can do one post and everyone in our group will know what's going on. We have some really super exciting things. So we could use you if you're creative or you have 
ideas, stories, pictures, anything at all, please join us. We're a really fun group. And I think that's it, Sue. I think, that's about, it. So, I think that's about it. I think that's about it. So now uh, some great advice from Matthew about taking one day at a time. Do not worry about tomorrow or tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And that's from Matthew chapter six, verse 34. I actually gave that advice to someone this week, Sue. Yep. And remember, yep. friends, we love you. You are a beloved child of God. God loves you, and so do we. Absolutely. If you need something, please don't hesitate to reach out to the church. Our staff, Pastor Tim, we, we are there for you. And if you need something, please reach out. So, friends, have a great day. Judy Hatch, aw, thank you. We got a lot of hearts on our chat right now. Thank you. We love you guys. Have a great day. Bye. Be blessed. Bye.